part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's... This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birdwine, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. Welcome to the Krypton Report. I am your host, Tyler, the Superman of Blue, the Man of Tomorrow. And with me is that mighty master of all things awesome and red with a beard that says it all, the man who plows snows just by looking at it, Mr. James Cole. Welcome, buddy. Yeah. Use my heat vision, melt it all. That's what I said, man, when you're yeah. out there working and having to plow in snow. I was like, just use your heat vision. Right? Yeah, that would be nice. Oh, You're like Tyler. I'm not really Superman, you dumbass. <laughs> I'm like, right. I've been watching. I wouldn't been... wouldn't really be sore today from from putting out all that salt if I was. Yeah, the the DA words become more common in my vernacular because I've been watching. We we watched all of that '90s show, and then we we've been for the past month and a half watching that '70s show. So you know, you just let a little red form and sleep in, slip in there every now and then. <laughs> right but hey man we got a lot of like small nuggets of things to talk about been an interesting, interesting yeah because we're really just waiting for any news yeah, like <laughs> to see really to well, come out the super bowl falls on my birthday this year and that's when we get the full flash trailer so we will get the flash trailer on my birthday Ooh, happy birthday yeah that'll be a good present i know and I'm pretty pumped about that. And speaking of the Flash movie, uh, spoilerish, I guess, is we got some looks at some of the toys, like the packaging on the toys. And there is a toy. Okay. Skip ahead like two minutes, people, if you want to hear this. That's called Dark Flash. That's all it says. Dark Flash. And yeah. he looks he looks kind of like the Black Flash that Thon was last season on the The Flash. Yeah, he's got some like, like things that are like coming up off of his shoulders and stuff. Um, I don't, I don't think I've seen what you're talking about. So. It's the same it, with the Eobard Thon in the yeah. TV it really show. looked like what I what you that picture you sent of the Dark Flash. Yeah, um, I, I'm just I'm wondering how that's gonna be. You know, I mean, we've we've heard a lot that um, the Flash is the villain of the movie, so. Um, that's a very good possibility that it's just, you know, another multiverse soul flash. I mean, we, uh, there has been black flashes and stuff like that over the years that have more represented like death and the speed force and things like that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. The dark, the black so, racer and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's cool. We have a lot of like little trailers to talk about. If you think about it, like, um, but quick notes. It is rumored that Titans will return in April. Um, that's the biggest rumor I've seen. I'm kind of bummed that they didn't, like, as soon as, you know, part one of Doom Patrol ended, they didn't go into part two of Titans. That kind of bummed me out. Um, Battle for the Super Sons is on HBO Max, people. It was dropped early. It's getting a lot of buzz um, since it's on HBO Max. And it seems like that's becoming the new thing that a lot of people are waiting till they hit HBO Max to really dive into these animated films. And it's kind of a bummer. Um, so, yeah. Now, getting into some other things. We got a trailer for the Flash TV series Season 9. And it was cool. Like It, did, it just didn't really give us a whole bunch. But... No, I I enjoyed it. Um, let's see. I think I have. It looked good. It makes me want to catch up on the last two seasons of The Flash, so I can watch it as it goes out. We get a quick glimpse about a new speedster. We see Red Death. Uh, we have some dialogue about Iris complaining that Barry's talking about seeing things before they happen, and she doesn't want to know everything that's going to happen in the future. Yada yada yada. So. That's cool. Can't wait for that. We have like 17 days or something as of this recording until it drops. We also got another f 
season nine poster, which is neat because it's Barry running down the street, but then in the windows of like the sh- the stores to the side, the buildings are all the the first poster for each season. So, kind of trying to culminate there and show us, hey, you know this is this is the end of the Flash, <laughs> right? I mean, it's kind of the the official send off of the Arrowverse, the Arrowverse proper or the Arrowverse Prime. Yeah, you know because they. Well, I mean, Superman and Lois is a thing, but um, it's it, it's on a, a different Earth. But it's, it's all in the. This is the end of Earth Prime. Yeah, because they, you know, they showed us that it's all connected. But this is the last of the Earth Prime, you know. I mean, it was the second series, you know. It's gone and even. It's gone the longest, right? So it's going to be sad. It's going, you know, but all good things must end. Nothing gold can stay, Pony Boy. <laughs> uh, we did get. Uh, Shazam Fury of the Gods. We got a TV spot where before this month is over, we're supposed to get a full trailer, a new trailer, but it had some new footage in it. So, uh, we saw Billy slash Shazam uh, holding the staff and shoot lightning from his hand. We saw more of the dragon. Yeah. The dragon stuff was pretty cool looking. Um, so th- that's cool. We got, it's, we did learn that it's going to be released in China. Which is great because that means that movie will probably do very well. Having, you know, that whole other market. Um, had Black Adam, I think, released in China, it would have done a lot better as well. Um, and we've got a lot of promo art for Shazam. And I'll be honest, a lot of this art that I've seen for it, it's okay. Like, it's nothing that's gotten me like, super excited. It kind of just looks like almost like AI drawings. You know what I'm saying? Like how there's been that big thing of like AI art. Yeah. It's um, like they have a thing that says Billy Batson and it shows, you know, him as the champion. It says the champion. Uh, Mary Bromfield, the brains. Darla Dudley, the speed. Freddie Freeman, the nerd. Uh, Eugene Choi, the gamer, and then Pedro Panea, the muscle. And I didn't realize how many of their names were alliterations till just now. But anyways, it, I mean, it's cool. Like, you know, it's playing up some imagery, but none of the promo art really got me super stoked. But I'm already super stoked for the movie. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean. It's it's the next thing to come. It's um, you know we really enjoyed um, Shazam one, and I know everybody around here is going to enjoy watching it um, once it eventually comes home. I mean, yeah, like I, we, you know, we got some Shazam artwork, those like drawings and stuff. I Shazam one is probably one of my favorite. DC comic book films ever. It's just a good time and fun. Even when you just want to throw, you know, the evil woman off a cliff. Yeah. Um, no, it's, it is a, it is a great movie. It's, it's a, it's a family friendly movie that you can put on any time. Even and though just it's, enjoy it. Even though it's Christmas, you know, like you can just kind of put it on any time. Cause that's, that's really how I look at it. Is even though it's a Christmas film, I watch it any time of the year. So, uh, yeah, it always just kind of makes me happy. Now, it very much is Christmas, but it's not like overtly Christmas, but it very much is Christmas. Um, now, did we talk about that dismal thing called the Gotham Knights trailer yet? Uh, I you know what i'd have to watch it right now just to kind of, uh again right now just to get some sort of idea um because it just it it doesn't stick you know what i mean <laughs> like watching that stuff doesn't stick in my head um so basically they're trying hard to get me to watch this thing 
because like I told you, we know that Misha Collins is going to be in two-face makeup. Okay. But in the trailer for Gotham Knights, we see a Talon. We see a Talon attack and they're, and the new character, I don't even want to say his name because it's stupid, but it's holding a sword and the Talon's attack. It's, it's a Talon. And I'm just like, they are trying very hard to get me to watch this thing. Yeah. This image, this image sticks, you know, I, I remember this one, but yeah, I just don't remember the, the trailer itself. Yeah. There's not much other than just the same crap that we're just like, eh. but, um, you know, he's being blamed for the murder of Bruce Wayne and the whole idea of like the Joker's daughter character is such a weird character that her last name's Dent, but yet her name's Duella Dent. And she's supposed to be the Joker's daughter, but yet she seems more like she should be Two-Face's daughter. And they're trying to make her out to be like a good character. Yeah, th- this show's going to bomb. But I at least have to watch an episode when Misha's in uh, makeup. Yeah. Um, you know, no matter how much we talk um, about this show, because we bring it up a lot because it's still a thing and they're promoting it and everything. It's you know, Superman and Lois is going to lead into it. And I just, as much as we talk about it, it just keeps falling off of my radar. Oh yeah. I'm not, <laughs> it, it, it's only going to like do anything because it's going to premiere after Superman and Lois. So now moving on, I'm going I'm to hold one thing till last. Uh, we did get some more pictures of the Legion film. It is coming in February. It showed Supergirl with what looks like another Supergirl, another Kara, but in a different outfit. Um, we got Solomon Grundy. Then we see Superman and Supergirl at the farm. Then we got a clip that has the two of them talking and Clark throws like this orb ball thingy that opens a portal and they decide to fly through it taking them to the future and we got a little clip of batman and superman kind of arguing about Kara's purpose and being on earth so i feel like they're doing some really good marketing to try to get this film out in february and i'm I'm really hinting at the february part because there's a reason but what do, what do you think about the legion what we're seeing um i mean i'm kind of excited that it's coming out at at this time, you know, we're, we're kind of watching the Legion. So yeah. it's really cool to have it associated. It's, um, it's like, it's almost like we planned that James. Yeah, kind of. Um, but, uh, <laughs> the, uh, I, I enjoyed the clips that I saw. <sighs> Jensen Ackles as, as, uh, uh, Batman is is really good. It's gl- I'm glad to glad to have him as as the Tomorrow vs. Batman. Um, I agree. And, gonna... Um, I'm I'm excited to have Supergirl in this. Um, unfortunately, you know, we were just getting to the point where we had this that awesome cliffhanger and Kara showing up in Young Justice, and and then and then we don't have nothing coming that we're <laughs> yeah that it seems like so it's it's good to get some get some more kryptonian content and and the way that they're skipping around with this tomorrow verse i mean by the next film we might have john kent so who knows <laughs> you know uh, yeah seriously so all that to say we got our first trailer for the next dc animated film the doom that came to gotham now, I read this when they announced this because I was intrigued by it. It's written by Mike Minolia. Minolia. You know, most famous for creating and writing Hellboy. It's a very Lovecraftian Batman story. And the trailer, I was surprised that this one's rated PG-13, first of all. I'm glad it is because I don't think the R animated film actually ever really do that great. But it's PG-13. It definitely looks very intense. But this one's coming out in March. 
Yeah. Like month, month and a half behind uh, and, Legion. And usually they're a couple of months because they're like every, like four movies a year, you know, one per quarter. You get the first one, then you get one, and like the more spring, summer, then like late summer into fall, and then one towards, you know, late fall, winter. Right. Um, well, you know, this these movies have always been really good sellers. I mean, they've, they've been producing them now for, uh, uh, since 2007. Yeah. Or, or releasing them, should I say since 2007. Um, I mean, we're 16 years out. It's longer than, than the MCU. <laughs> yes. It's pretty awesome. Um, it makes me feel old. I know. Right. Uh, but I would not be opposed to them <laughs> doing more, you know, doing five or six a year just I, to fill out the, as long as, as long as they can keep the quality up. this, this animation appears, I mean, it's really good, but it also appears like it's probably, um, easier, like a cheaper, easier, cheaper way to go about it. Yeah. Um, which I think helps with definitely the speed as well as the quality. I mean, it's very good. You know, it's like there for a while when they would do like you had the four main ones and then you had like a, a one-off, you know, like we had um, for two years, we had those Batman 66 films. We had the Teen Titans versus the Teen Titans go. We had, um, what do you call it? Was one of the, the Batman and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? You know, these are all separate animated films that were not part of this. The you know animated DC division the or whatever. Con- yeah, the ongoing continuity. Not even continuity the kind not of even thing. not even the continuity. They were like because I think they were done by like Warner Brothers Animation compared to being by like the DC Animation. I don't know. Oh, okay. But anyways, we were getting a, like an extra film with these characters. And that's kind of stopped, like, you know, because now even like the odd ones, like the Catwoman Hunted, was like part of the rotation of these uh, animated films, and we're going to be getting that other anime based uh, film. I think comes out after the Doom that came to Gotham. Yeah, the Ruby and Justice League. Yeah, I ain't watching that. So we'll uh, we'll skip that one. So I'll watch it because I like anime, but I don't have I don't have a whole lot of um, like interest peaked. I mean, it's DC and anime and, you know, some I've some I've enjoyed and some I haven't, you know, and there's been a, a handful of DC anime film uh, pictures that have come out. And then today, as of this recording, we got our first trailer for the Harley Quinn uh a very problematic Valentine's Day special. So, James, what did you think about this? Actually, you know what? That is one I have not had a chance to uh, watch. I was busy and I totally forgot about that. So, all right, hold on. And give me. <laughs> oh, Jesus! We're that back. was great. <laughs> so. We which, <laughs> it's gonna be very, very, very adult. We see Zatanna and the Flash together. King Shark has him a lady. Uh, Bruce is in jail. Catwoman with some kite man has a woman. Uh, and Bane talks to Etrigan and gets a nice little rhyme. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, the Bane rhyme. And then, and then the Bane later on. <laughs> Bane and and then Darkseid is in love with maybe Talia Al Ghul. Maybe I don't uh, know who that is. Is her cold dead eyes from across the room? Darkseid is in love. <laughs> and then um, Clock King and Riddler, and then uh, a very interesting Harley and Ivy scene that infects everybody to uh, participate <laughs> in activity together. So this is going to be a very, very interesting, maybe a Patreon review. <laughs> <laughs> I feel Stream- like we can only talk about the trailer on the on a Patreon. Yeah. 
Woo! But that's coming February 9th. <sighs> Interesting. Some very, a lot of imagery. A Good lot. thing it's an animation. Whew. It'd be like an episode of Doom Patrol. Woo! Uh, okay. And I love the last how this starts thing. with, with uh, Zaytana and the Flash. <laughs> oh, that, that's, that's a couple. I'm like, huh, never thought of them, but okay. The last thing is the 30 second trailer clip for Superman and Lois season three. James, how many times you watch this? Um, let me, let me do. Oh, this one. Yeah. I've seen this one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, how, many, how many times you watch this? Cause very interesting. I've watched it a few times. And so the, some of the highlights is we see Clark in his new suit. It's Jonathan and Jordan's birthday. Um, we get a line from Lois that she might be pregnant. Lois goes missing. And that we see the Daily Planet cr- like crumbling. And it's crumbling and falling towards Lois as Clark's flying. And looks very intense. We have a line with uh, Sam saying, like, basically what happened to my daughter. And we see Nat and John in their suits. We see Jordan with his heat vision. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, 30 seconds, I'm in. Yeah, 30 seconds. There's a lot here. But, um, I but mean, what it's, I- it's they're, 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 like you said, like you you described just about everything that happened in it and that's it like like there's yeah. no there's nothing to say what is going on with anything here except for it looks like Lois is in peril and the daily planet ball falling down looks pretty awesome yeah you know why I mean? people... <laughs> so can i ask you this question from this trailer do you see where they're doing injustice do i see where they're doing i have not clocked anything that would Exactly. You know how many people said, oh, so they're going to do Injustice for season three. And I'm like, how are you getting that from this trailer? Like, I got an argument with some dude on Twitter. I'm like, how are you getting that from this trailer? You you can't. Because Injustice was more than just the death of Lois. And um, people are stupid just clickbait. Yeah. Um, no, I, I just looked for anything specific just now again, um, like it says 30 seconds. So just keep replaying it. Um, no, nothing at all there. I mean, yeah, it's, it's kind of like the most recent thing and it's like, um, there are people out there now who are, they, all they complain about is bad Superman. Yeah. So, um, it's it's just another reason for somebody to say something negative towards Superman. You know what I mean? Besides him being boring and a Boy Scout and blah, blah, blah. Now it's like evil Superman. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't see anything there. Um, I don't suspect anything's going to happen to Lois. Um, not in this show. I, I don't feel that that's... I don't feel that that's going to happen, you know? Mm-hmm. But um, I'm I'm looking forward to the new season very much. Can't wait for the first episode. Same. It's a it's a pretty that's... intense uh pretty intense thirty seconds. And I think that's all I need. I'm like, bring it on. So that's all the news that we got. There, we're all caught up. Woo woo. And now we'll talk about some other things. Um, any fun comics, you know, just like we've kind of been talking about world's finest and we can tackle those two if you'd like. Um, yeah, I did read world's finest nine and 10. All right. Thoughts. Um, thoughts. Uh, well, I do. It's kind of funny that uh, it's always fun to watch the Joker teamed up with people and whoever this key character is, um, it's, I, I kind of like the way that they're working together. You know what I mean? Like, like the key is like just doing his thing, but he's just, he's always observing 
the Joker. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't feel like he's in any real danger with the Joker. But yeah, you, you know, as as somebody working with the Joker, because you know, most of the time, people working with the Joker end up dead. This is true. So, um, yeah, and uh, I mean the the ending of ten is is definitely uh, an interesting grab because I'm I wanna I wanna talk about that, but I don't want to jump jump to the end of 10. <laughs> right, go for it. We're just kind of talking about him in general. Okay. Well, you know, so we have, we have David, we have the, um, the kid from, uh, new Gotham or like planet Gotham or something mm-hmm. that where, where he came from. And, you know, he's super powered. He's working with Batman. Batman's trying to teach him. Um, last we knew Joker was really excited that there's a new, um, uh, sidekick in the group. Um, I, I love that the Joker pulls out, uh, the angler's hand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, uh, every time, every time I see the Joker do something like this, I just like reading it. I just hear Mark Hamill. Yeah. Mark Hamill, who's officially. Um, tired from being the Joker because he says he can't do it without Kevin being Batman, and that was uh, always his big driving force. Was if Kevin was doing it, he was on board. So right. I mean, that is sad. I mean, that's a huge loss to make it two people. But I mean, they've worked together for thirty years doing that. I think it would have been interesting if they can find a way of doing kind of a almost like the Joker saying farewell to Batman in a way of like, Oh man, he's not here anymore. Like, who am I going to play with? And like the Joker kind of like giving up because Batman's not around anymore. Uh, I don't know. It'd be kind of neat. Just something for Mark Hamill to kind of say farewell and pay tribute to uh, Kevin. Right. Um, got the uh, uh, flash and Superman out at sea, helping people. Um, I like the I like the exercise. You can fly, right? <laughs> um, got Aqualad coming up, uh, bringing a whale to to stop some pirates from taking a ship. Say pirates or mercenaries, one of the two. Same thing. Yeah. Um. They uh. The Titans show up. We got Robin, Kid Flash, Donna Troy, um, and uh, like they're they're having discussions with David here. Um, anyways, I kind of lost track. I was saying so we got David, who is super powered. He's having he's I like him having these interactions with um, with so many characters. He's having, you know, he's trying to be friends with the Titans. Um, He's working with Batman and Superman, trying to learn from them. Um, But he clearly has some anger and power issues. Yep. Um, So he... uh, Yeah, during... um, during one of his, uh, during an adventure, they stop uh, the city from flooding. It was a pretty cool, interesting thing where he opened, where Key like opened a door to the bottom of Gotham River and started flooding uh, the city. It's pretty interesting. Not wholly original at this point, but nope. <laughs> it was pretty awesome the way it was done. But we get David, who is. Um, taken right out from behind Batman Um, and he's kidnapped by the Joker. And then in the next issue, um, Joker is torturing him. Um, We get a nice little backstory for key, which was interesting. Um, It was uh, Joker with his Joker gas and famously the crowbar. Mm Mm-hmm. 
Um, everybody's looking for him. They've got uh, the Titans, Batman and Superman, scouring the uh, scouring the city, trying to find him. Um, all the doors is the doors that they come across was really cool. I love how they solved that puzzle, um, saying that Joker wears gloves and the key doesn't, and Superman uses his microscopic vision and he identifies the only door that they used because of fingerprints. So that was a pretty sweet use of the powers. Um, they rescue David. <clears throat> While they're busy with a giant creature fighting, David goes after uh, the Joker very angrily. He destroys his uh, destroys his whole fun house, um, and he's saying he's going to kill him. He's he's going to kill him. He says, "Die, you sick freak!" He says, "You tortured me, uh, and <laughs> you bleeping psychopath." Uh, you tortured me and got off got off on it. If I ever lay eyes on you again, ever, I swear I'll kill you. I don't care if it's tomorrow or 20 years from now. I will kill you. And he's Magog. Mm-hmm. From uh, Kingdom Come, kills the Joker, and the people, like, go, f- you know, that's when everything turns around. That's the injustice that um, Superman doesn't believe in. Mm-hmm. That's where that's kind of where that story kicks off. So that was really cool, um, really cool final page. I didn't really, I didn't see David being Magog. Yep. Mainly because I don't know where Magog comes from, but but that story alone. But yeah, I didn't see him. But it's uh, you know Mark Wade wrote that. He's writing this. I think it's pretty awesome. Mark Wade is it's interesting how much he's cementing himself back into DC comics right now, because I started reading, of course we've been reading this. I started reading the Batman versus Robin. Yeah. I want to read that. I, I and there's I, like three or four issues on ultra that I have to read. And how much that plays into the Lazarus stuff that's going on now. Like, he brings back what's happened in this world's finest stuff into the modern continuity. So when we thought this was all like a side story, now this is pretty important stuff that happened in the past. And it's really interesting how he's paving the way forward with this. You know, we are now officially out of, dark crisis and i guess this kind of is something that happened yeah it's out of dark crisis into the dawn of dc coming through lazarus planet or something so which i've read read yet i'm waiting for that to come to ultra i'm very interested in it i've read the two lazarus planet like they're just like collection of short stories um and i feel like the main story's kind of been going on in the batman and robin but it's interesting how much it uses from this mark wade knows what he's doing um cool so that's cool i i well, read also I, I know from certain oh, what did i read um which which books was it i read so many but i know that there was another connection they were talking about the devil of neza yep that's i didn't remember but yeah he is the one kicking off and causing the lazarus stuff to happen oh that's that's he, yeah. So he is back, and that's why I was like, "Oh snap!" There's more to it, but it was still kind of like, "Oh snap!" Wow, good, good on you, Mark Wade. Right? Was it Justice League? So, yeah. I've been reading a lot of the. Uh, I caught up with all the one bad days. The only one I haven't read Bane's, but man, I read none Bane's. Of the, none I read, of the I books. Also read Two Face and Riddler. Sorry. None of the books have let me down. I thought Riddler's was probably the weakest. I think F- Mr. Freeze is the strongest. Then Penguin. Then Two-Face. And like I said, I haven't read Banes yet. But they all have been really good. Yeah, they all they all were really good. Um, You know, One Bad Day, uh, when it came to, like, the Riddler and Two-Face, it didn't really seem like they were like continuity per se, like they, uh-huh. they fit like in right now or, or someplace that we are 
currently like reaching, pulling from. Um, but the Bane one seemed to use things that have happened in, um, in continuity, uh, Batman getting addicted to Venom, um, Bane kicking Venom and not, and not using it anymore. Um, as well as the death of Alfred. They touch upon all of that stuff. And I wasn't expecting it to be like to grab things from continuity like that. Um, but the the bane in the the really cool thing about the bane story is oh i want to talk about it i don't i don't want to spoil it though dang it all right i need to go watch it and then we'll talk about it <laughs> i mean read it not watch it but all right i will read it and we will talk about it next time all right <laughs> But yeah, those have been great, and I've done. A, I've been trying to catch up on detective comics. I just and I and I went back and I started reading uh, old Shazam. I'm just trying to read more of old Shazam stuff. Did you get your Ultra yet? Or I did. Awesome! I did. Awesome! Fantastic! Um, I got like ten more pages to read on Dark Crisis of Inf- Infinite Earths number seven, and I'll have read that entire. Um, storyline, um, mainline miniseries, as well as all the tie-ins. Nice. Yeah. So, um, then I read the world's finest, um, um, and then I'm, I'm going to be branching out again to grab some more. Cause I try to go through books as they come in weekly, mm-hmm. you know, and, and try and keep up on all of them. So I don't like, like read a large chunk of one thing and then go and read another large chunk of something. This way I can kind of keep the stories a little straighter than when I read like 200 issues in two and a half months. (laughs) It is harder when you're bouncing around in time, trying to keep things straight, but you're trying to read some older stuff that you just want to enjoy. But then you're like, Oh yeah, that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, that's kind of it for comics right now. We're just kind of taking it in a stride. And the next thing, oh, I wanted to mention mention this: the Superman Speechless comic. What's so interesting about this is what they're doing is we, Janine and I, when we were in Cincinnati, met a lady who makes books like this. And what it is is it's a comic book, but there's no words in it, and it's for kids to look at the pictures. And then to tell you the story, Ooh. so that so that there's no dialogue; it's just pictures. And then they they kind of create and make up the story themselves. We bought the kids a, a book like this of dragons from a lady in at a con, and now we have this. So I think that's kind of neat. Awesome! Yeah, that sounds really neat. So our our next segment is I kind of have this kind of quick notes thing here. Just kind of the history of who are the Legion. Usually we talk about that, you know, before we dive into something, but I just was going to do a quick kind of history on who are the Legion and the characters. So here we go. The Legion of Superheroes is a fictional superhero team appearing in DC Comics created by Otto Binder and artist Al Plastino. The Legion is a group of superpowers beings living in the 30th and 31st century. First appear in Adventure Comics 247 in April of 1958. Initially, the team was closely associated with the original Superboy character and was uh, portrayed as a young group of time travelers. Later, the Legion's origin and backstory were fleshed out, and the group was given its own monthly comic. Eventually, Superboy was removed from the team altogether and appeared only an occasional guest star. The team has undergone two major reboots during its run. The original version was replaced with a new rebooted version following the events of the Zero Hour storyline in 1994, and another reboot team was introduced in 2004. A fourth version of the team, nearly identical to the original version, was introduced in 2007. And then in 2019, DC announced a new series written by Bendis. Bendis. Superman was featured series in Adventure Comics in the 50s. In Adventure Comics 247, Superboy meets three teenagers from the 30th century. 
Lightning Boy, Saturn Girl, and Cosmic Boy. Notice it's Lightning Boy, who are members of a superhero club called the Legion of Superheroes. Their club had been formed with Superboy as an inspiration, and they had time traveled to recruit Superboy as a member. After a series of tests, Superboy was awarded membership and returned to his own time. Although intended as a one-off story focusing on Superboy, the Legion proved so popular that it returned for an encore in Adventure Comics 267, December of 59. Now, I went ahead here and I put some of the more famous members of the Legion. There have been hundreds of characters, but I think these are the ones I've kind of assembled that we hear come up more and more and are pretty common core. Cosmic Boy, Saturn Girl, Lightning Lad, Bouncing Boy, Chameleon Boy, Phantom Girl, Triplicate Girl, Brainiac 5, um, Monel, Supergirl, Star Boy, Dream Girl, and Timberwolf. And I should have organized them by boy and girl. So it could have been like boy, 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 girl, 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 girl. <clears throat> Yeah. <laughs> so the Zero Hour reboot, 1994 to 2004. Following Zero Hour, a new Legion continuity was created, beginning with a retelling of the origin starting in Legion of Superheroes Volume 4, Number Zero, and continued in a spin-off sister series, Legionnaires Number Zero, released in October of 94. Lightning Lad was renamed Livewire, and after the group's founding, a large number of heroes were added to the roster very quickly. Several members from the previous continuity were given new code names, and some new heroes were added, including XS the granddaughter of Barry Allen, the second Flash. Kinetics and Gates. While in some ways the following the pattern of the original continuity, the new continuity diverged from the old one in several ways. Some characters died as they had previous, others did not. The three-boot continuity was 2004 to 2009. Post-Infinite Crisis was 07 to 11. And then the new 52 was 2011 to 2015. Those are all kind of Different things have kind of happened with no substantial, really, anything that pops. A new Legion of Superhero series from writer Michael Bendis, Brian Michael Bendis, in 2019, was announced. It was a prelude to series entitled Legion of Superheroes Millennium, was released in September and October, while the ongoing series debuted in November. The series ended in January 2021 with 12 issues. This was the one that featured John Kent and was i don't know i didn't read it because i don't like the legion but i thought about it just because of john kent in tv and film representation in animation cosmic boy chameleon boy and saturn girl made an appearance on superman the animated series in the episode new kids in town the three team time traveler stopped brainiac who has traveled back to kill its teenage clark kent jason Priestley. Voice Chameleon Boy, Melissa Joan Hart, voice Saturn Girl, and Chad Lowe voiced Cosmic Boy. In 2004, episode of Justice League Unlimited entitled The Greatest Story Never Told, the Legion's arch-villain Mordu appears, member of the Justice League battle Mordu in the background while the narrative follows Booster Gold. The Legion, along with the, F the Fatal Five, later appear in a 2006 episode of Justice League Unlimited entitled Far From Home with Goggy Gress as Bouncing Boy and Matt, I can't pronounce his last name, as Brainiac 5. Supergirl was taken to the future to help fight the Fatal Five and free the Legion. And decided to stay, and the other Legionnaires who appear in the episode include Chameleon Boy, Colossal Boy, Cosmic Boy, Lightning Lad, Phantom Girl, Saturn Girl, Shadow Lass, Timber Wolf, Ultra Boy, and Wildfire. Woo! And then, of course, the Legion of Superheroes cartoon that we are reviewing premiered in September of 2006. Saturn Girl, Phantom Girl, and Chameleon Boy appear in Young Justice Phantoms, which they did a great job in that series. Now, live action. In 2008, it was announced that Jeff Johns would be writing an episode of Smallville titled Legion, which would introduce the Legion of Heroes into the series continuity. The Legionnaires were the founding members, Cosmic Boy, Saturn Girl, and Lightning Lad. The episode aired on January 15th, 2009, and featured the three Legionnaires following, uh, fighting the Fatal Five villain, The Persuader. 
then later, of course, Brainiac 5 would appear um, in an episode played by Jason Mars, James Marsters uh, with his Legion ring. And, of course, the Legionnaires would reappear in Season 8, Doomsday. In The Flash, episode Welcome to Earth 2, as Barry and Sisko and Wells are traveling to Earth 2, glimpses of the multiverse are seen, including an image of the Legion, Flight Ring, a flight ring appears in the Supergirl season one episode Solitude. It appears as one of the objects inside the Fortress of Solitude. Later on in the series, the Legion will become very popular as we would meet Monel, who had joined the Legion, Saturn Girl, Brainiac 5, who would then stay on Earth while Winslow shot would then go to the future to join the Legion. The Legion appears in the 2019 animated film. Justice League vs. the Fatal Five. In this movie, members of the Fatal Five attack the Legion's headquarters, steal a time sphere. Starboy accidentally follows, but the process of traveling to the 21st century, he loses his medication, which keeps his mind stabilized. He eventually meets the Justice League and teams up with him to fight the Fatal Five. And then the new film that will be coming soon. So that is our quick history on the Legion. Uh, that was pretty succinct. <laughs> yeah, I had some free time. <laughs> and that brings us to this week's episodes. So we tackled, they're kind of getting back on order because like we discussed last time was the or, the order that we had on IMDb did not go with the order that was presented to us on our Blu-ray set. So we have episode Brain Drain. Uh, A major malfunction since Brainiac 5's genius IQ plummeting to obtain the rare element needed to save him. Superman and Timberwolf must travel to the most inhospitable planet in the galaxy. And thanks to a transporter accident, they have only Brainy's head to guide them. James, thoughts on this episode? Um, It was funny to see Brainy losing power and getting, like, delirious. Yeah, and... It kind of reminded me just because, like, he gets separated, so his body's off doing its own adventure. Right. Well, you know, they're, and then of course, the planet that they land on has uh, weaknesses for Clark. Yeah, like out of a yellow sun, like no yellow mm-hmm. sun. This is why I and never like Superman fighting in space. So why I never like Superman being out in space, man. Like it just, it just always bothers me. Um, you know, he didn't give up and he got brainy to, I don't know, stare at the mineral and recharge. I mean, it's kind of how it worked out. (laughs) It was cool. It happened like in the the final second. Um, so it was, it was a fun episode with them, you know, because there was like a big Kaluan connection that, they all did and Brainy hadn't done it in a long time. So, but when he did it threw him out of whack and they were just trying to put him back together. Ah, okay. The next episode we watched was chain of command. When disaster strikes lightning lads, home planet of Winath, the Legion is called to help lightning's lads efforts to take charge are thwarted. However, when long absent Legion, Leader Cosmic Boy arrives with an enigmatic new hero in tow. So what did you think about this one? Um, well, that was the third episode and I got pulled out, pulled out, got pulled away before the end. Uh, oh, so notes. that one I didn't finish. No, uh, my notes. Um, you know, it was interesting because we see lightning lads like home get destroyed um, we see him struggling and where people don't respect him and they're, you know, it, it kind of tears the team apart. But then at the end of the episode, what's neat is they vote a new leader for the Legion. And who do you think they vote for? Lightning lad? No. Bouncing boy. Oh, bouncing boy. Bouncing boy gets appointed leader because he's the only one that doesn't really want the job. Oh, Okay. So it was it was interesting just to see Lightning Lads, you know, struggling with trying to lead and be this 
inspiration in this force, but no one really respecting him and giving the time of day. Um, yeah, I mean, when I pop it back on to watch the next couple of episodes, I will finish that one. Um, but, uh, the second episode, episode 10, cause you went episode nine, episode 11, episode 10 here. Yep. Um, cause I was doing <laughs> the order 10, that the came substitutes. Up. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, the episode 10, the substitutes, that was a really fun episode. Yes, it was because I laughed hysterically. I put in my uh, notes, like there's this huge spot where there's like no Superman, nothing. Um, So why don't you talk about that one? Go ahead and kind of lead us into it. Uh, uh, it says it's that time of year again. Legion auditions. This year's crop is hardly promising with most hopefuls turning out to be comic duds. But when the Legion is overwhelmed, fighting a mysterious foe in Earth's upper atmosphere, a group of rejects takes it upon themselves to save the world below with outrageous results. Um, So uh, a handful of people who didn't make the Legion this year during their like little recruitment interview uh, stuff, um, which is really funny because it's like um, color, color boy. Uh, hold on, I got or it written color. down. Hold on. Because some of the auditions... I know one okay. was Porcupine Boy. I know one was The Stone. Hold on, hold on. I got some of the names here. Okay. okay. Chlorophyll Kid. Yes. Stone Stone Boy, Color Kid, Porcupine Pete, Mad Eater Lad, Star Boy, uh, Infectious Lass. Uh, yeah. Um, Those were some of the ones that auditioned. Yeah. And it's funny because they, they try to save the day in their own way and they all end up going wrong is, is quite funny. Um, I really laughed when um, stone boy uh, stood there with his hand up and turned to stone. When he turns to stone, he can't move. So he's just like a statue and the criminal just ran by him. <laughs> it was hilarious. Um they're trying to fight Starfinger who feels like a very Christopher Walken inspired villain and it plays out that Starfinger is like the cause of the creatures that are eating the atmosphere. Yeah. So actually they come out into- these like little tiny like cute bunny type chipmunk things. And then and then they float up into the sky and they transform into these like like vicious um, uh, insectoid type things, and they're eating the atmosphere. Um, and and when when the duds on the ground call Brainiac to try and have them help, they say Starfinger is not important to us. Um, you know, he's a low level crook. He's a low level crook, and we're dealing with something big right now ended up being Starfinger was the cause of it all. Yep. Um, it's really funny. He's like, how do we get this glove off? I don't know. I never figured it out. And then Brainy's just like, click, and pulls it right off of his arm. <laughs> How'd you do that? And then Stone Boy falls from space after he goes up with a balloon of these, these little cute things. And he turns to stone, and he says that he... He guided his trajectory right back down to crash at him from the upper atmosphere. It was hilarious. They're like, that was great luck, Stoneboy. What are you talking about, luck? I purposely deduced, you know, made the projector. I had to get the trajectory right and all this. What are you talking about, luck? So, <clears throat> yeah, it was great. It was just a, it was a fun episode that just kind of it takes you out for a split second just because you're like, huh, what's going on here? Because you're just thrown off that none of the people that you're expecting to do anything are really part of the episode, but it was refreshing that way. Yeah. It was a very funny, very enjoyable episode. It was my favorite of the ones that, that we watched this, this go around. It might be my favorite so far this season because I'm enjoying the Legion, but at the same time, like I feel like some of the episodes, nothing's really staying with me. 
you know? Um, oh, yeah, I see that. Like, I watch it, I enjoy it, but I'm not, like, it's not, like, something like, oh, my gosh, like, this really was awesome. It's just, like, a fun watch. And, you know, we're, we have two episodes left, and that's going to end the first season. And I'm like, cool, because I'm actually really excited to get into the second season. Because I've never seen anything from the second season. And that's when we get some interesting uh, changes to the characters. So. Yeah, definitely. But all right, man. That's that's all we got for this episode. It's kind of just catching up with some things and moving on through the through the Legion. And he, the only other thing I had that I totally forgot about was we did get a picture that um, the Adam man that Superman had battled in the flashback episode of season one of Superman and Lois will be returning in season three of Superman and Lois for an episode. Oh, was that the, uh, was that the image? I was like, Oh yes. I said that, I said that character, that must be an old image. Yep. He's, he's back. Cause you, cause you, they, like, he just wrapped filming his episode and Tyler's in the new costume. And of course, you know, Brian and I recently talked about Superman smashes the clan, which has that character more prominent in it. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with this character. And he's back. Ooh, nice. But yeah. So thanks everybody for tuning in and joining James and I, as we discuss, and just kind of get caught up and get back in the groove of things. Um, keep reading comics, you know, let us know what you're reading. Let us know what you think. Hit us up on our social media. Check out our other episodes coming up. Let us and know if remember. you're reading along with us on Ultra. Yeah, like our, our comics, are, we're kind of readjusting comic reviews in some ways just because I want to do this segment more of like, what are you reading? Just because with Ultra, we are reading a lot and, you know, we're reading backwards and we're reading forwards. We're getting caught up on things and we're kind of caught up but yet one month behind because it just makes sense for ultra other than, you know, major Superman titles. Well, you know what, considering, considering that I have found that when you buy multiple books and life happens, sometimes that reading stack just continues to grow yep. and you might even have books in there that are well over more than one month old. You may have three month old books in that reading stack that just continues to grow that you can never seem to make, you know, make disappear. So I don't feel like one month with ultra is really going to hurt our enjoyment of reading these books and talking about them with you guys. Nope. Like I said, the only thing we're really going to keep going forward with is the Superman books as much as we can. Yep. So remember, everybody. We're going to press pause and hear a few words from our other podcasts on Press Play Podcast Network. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, The Geek of Steel, and Truth, Justice, and Hope. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. You find out all of our information. One dollar a month, you'll get extra special content that you don't get on the main show, like movie commentaries and whatever else comes out of our mouths. So check it out, patreon.com slash Krypton Report. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report. Look up in the sky. 
just want to say, if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network.